Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about the top three programming languages to learn in 2019. Now, it seems like everybody's doing videos like this and they all kind of say the same thing, but I'm actually going to bring something unique, which is pretty cool. Now, before we jump in, I want you to check out our sponsor, IBM Call for Code. This is a project that you guys can take part in by using your skills to create solutions to help in times of natural disaster. Call for Code is a global challenge for developers to create open source technology to help in times of natural disaster. Created by the David Clark Cause with founding partner IBM, Call for Code is bringing hundreds of thousands of developers together to build solutions using technology such as blockchain, AI, and IoT. With winning projects receiving cash prizes, project support from the Linux Foundation, and more. Natural disasters are among the world's greatest challenges with 2.5 billion people directly affected since 2000. And you have the power to help. Will you answer the call? Learn more by following the link in the description. So if you've seen any of these other videos, you've probably heard the same thing. Oh, you need to learn Python. Ah, you need to learn JavaScript. Well, if you've been on the internet pretty much at all in the last year or so, you've probably noticed a huge increase in the number of people studying JavaScript. This is with projects like 100 Days of Code. Why does every time I do a video outside, something fly in my face? 100 Days of Code, free code camp, and it's not like anything's wrong with these programs. I think they're great. And in fact, I think JavaScript is great. <laughs> but don't worry, I'm not here to trash JavaScript. I don't have all day. We're just gonna be talking about three different languages that'll actually help set you apart from the rest of the JavaScript developers. So it's almost as if JavaScript is becoming a prerequisite. So yeah, you should learn JavaScript. You should learn all the programming languages, but doing that is not necessarily enough to make you the master developer that's going to get millions of job offers every day. So if your focus is JavaScript, then great. Just make sure you master a particular piece of it and don't just be the average JavaScript developer. You're just gonna blend in with the rest of the crowd. Cause seriously, everybody and their grandma is now a JavaScript React developer. So take an extra step and do something to set yourself apart, such as learning these three languages. The first one, SQL, Structured Query Language. This is the language used to interface with relational databases. So databases are not going away. In fact, I think as the world focuses more and more on data, databases are going to be used even more. SQL is not used for every database out there, but it's kind of like the prerequisite in the same way JavaScript is essential for web development. So you can start with SQL, and then you can master the relational databases. So you can start with MySQL or Postgres or whatever you want to do. And then picking up these other variations of databases is a lot easier. So if you want to switch into a document style database such as MongoDB, piece of cake. Having these skills also helps you pick up other databases such as graph databases and all the other variations, you can look them up. Basically anything that's a no SQL database, it varies a little bit than the traditional relational database, but having that relational database background will help you learn all of them. Especially with this new surge of all these front end developers, everybody knowing JavaScript, having some back end experience actually sets you apart, right? Because if you have a million JavaScript developers to choose from, and then you have a much smaller subset of people that can have some back end experience working with the data layer, well, having those SQL skills might just make you a little bit more special than the rest of the crowd. So rather than just focusing on JavaScript, why not focus on a full stack position? So having maybe a JavaScript front end and back end, but using a database and really becoming a master in whatever database you're using. This is becoming huge with the increase of privacy laws and with the huge increase of focus on data breaches. If you're in a company and you have a data breach and you're working with the database, you're probably going to uh, get fired. <laughs> so make sure your SQL skills and your database skills are up to par. Don't neglect the data layer and you'll be setting yourself up for success. Now, the number two is less of a language and more of a category. So I'm kind of breaking the rules a little bit, but basically you should learn some kind of language to work with blockchain. So when you hear blockchain, you might be like, oh, I don't know what that is, or you might think of cryptocurrency, but it's much more than that. The blockchain is going to enable the creation of distributed applications. So this is actually one of my goals for the year is I want to be able to program on the blockchain, start making smart contracts and so forth. So if you're completely new to this, two things you might want to look up is Solidity and Chain Code. Solidity allows you to build what's known as a smart contract, which is basically an agreement written in software on what's known as the Ethereum blockchain. Chain code is the equivalent of this, but on a different system known as Hyperledger Fabric. Blockchain is a new way of data management and it's just going to become more relevant. 
This is another reason why I recommend sharpening your SQL skills because this can even come up when you're working with the blockchain. So I'm hoping by the end of the year I've sharpened my skills on this Get out of my face, you freak bag. So I'm hoping by the end of the year, I've sharpened my skills on this enough that I can create some content for you guys to help you get started with the blockchain as well as Ethereum and chain code and all this stuff. Now, if you wanna get started right away, I actually released a video which is an introduction to blockchain, partnered with a friend of mine, Carolyn Rogers from the IBM blockchain platform. It's a great introduction to blockchain and understanding all the principles around it. So go check that out. I'll leave a link for you guys probably in the description, but I'll probably forget. So it's probably not even there. Just, just go look it up if it's not. So number three is actually pretty boring. Nothing too special here. I'm going to recommend Java. So Java has been around forever. It's basically the default programming language for any college curriculum. You're gonna go to school, you're gonna learn Java. Now C Sharp is actually very, very similar to Java. So if you're learning Java or C Sharp, that's totally fine. In fact, if you have code in one or the other, you can pretty much copy and paste it and then just Java-ify it or C-sharpify it and it should work. Functionality-wise, they're almost identical, so whichever one you wanna go with, that's fine. So the reason I recommended Java is because it's so general purpose, you can do pretty much anything in it. And I believe the way you code inside of Java teaches you to have good practices. So it's a very good language to learn computer science principles. Coming from Java, switching to any other programming language should be pretty easy. And Java is this nice middle ground between not too low level like C or even C++, but also not too high level like Python. So when you actually code Java, there's probably going to be more syntax, more typing than if you chose a language like Python. But I believe that's okay because again, I believe it's this nice middle ground where you have some hand-holding, but not so much. So you can use Java to become a computer science master. On top of this, Java is used for pretty much anything. So you can develop web applications, mobile applications, you can do such things as machine learning, and you can even get into blockchain a little bit with Java, I think. Now, if you don't wanna learn Java or you're working on another programming language, I'd say that's probably okay. The most important thing is the SQL and the blockchain. I chose Java because it's a good general purpose programming language, but going with Python or JavaScript or any of these other popular programming languages is not going to hurt you. Now, I wanted to say that I am a strong believer in data, the power of data, what it can be used for to change the world. And I think you guys should really think about that too. On this channel, I've created a lot of content on databases, database design, database clustering, stored procedures, all that database stuff. That's not because I love databases, although I think they're pretty cool. It's because I believe data has very good useful purposes in this world. That's why I emphasize SQL, blockchain, and a good general purpose programming language. Now, let me ask you guys, can you use these skills to build something that can impact the world? Check out Call for Code where you can use these skills for good and impact the world. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Did I have a good top three choice? Is there any I forgot or any you think should be removed? What is your recommended way of learning these three skills? Maybe you should check out a platform like Pluralsight, which I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.